I've gotten pretty used to seeing this guy on my desk towering over me and it's a little sad, but it's time to disassemble him for the last time because he needs to be painted. And I barely know where to start because he's really big. That's what she said. My beautiful God machine. It's a process to get this guy disassembled and it kind of feels bad. It took a solid week's worth of work to make him stand, but he will soon be standing again and painted. And by soon, I mean in about a hundred hours. I have no idea how long this guy will take to paint, but I'm not putting any limits on it. It'll take as long as it takes. The Reaver has been a dream model for as long as I have known about Warhammer and I want it to be perfect. I did some testing of different spray primers, self etching, automotive, and paint and primer plus. I want only the best and really they all worked exactly the same. I went with automotive because it seemed to be the thinnest layer of paint. I took some painter's tape and put it over any spots that'll eventually get glued. Then I threw some primer over the Titan. Funnily enough, the primer is the exact same color as the original resin. I want to give the primer some time to cure and I want to savor this experience. This is a once in a lifetime. So I think before I get into the nitty gritty of hours and hours of base coating, I'm going to have a little dessert. I primed the Princeps and his buddies black with the airbrush. These models will never be touched, so they don't need automotive strength primer. Then I started base coating with an airbrush. I don't have any particular plans in mind, so I worked my way up through grays. Dark gray first, then light. I zenith all the dudes and did some value sketching on the Titan's head. This Titan is so big, it feels like I'm not painting a miniature. I'm not painting in scale, I'm actually just painting an object. I put a selection of colors on my palette and just went to town with some glazing. I want to do a hybrid of true metallic metal and non-metallic metal, using opaque paints to create highlights and shadows, and a subtle dry brushing of metallics for a little glitter. I made a million little scratches of paint and glazed more on top of these, as if this metal is ancient, with a random mottled appearance of blues and reds to give more detail than was really originally on the model. I splashed out a little hazard striping on the interior door, which was nice and tricky to reach with the brush. On the crew, I want them to pop out. The Knights and Titan Legions are more medieval than normal 40k, so I think red for their suits and blue for their helmets. Glazing these colors over the Xenothal and bringing them up to a bright poppy full saturation. And on the eyes. The Titan's eyes will be glowing green so the crews should match. They see the world through the eyes of the machine. I glued down their butts and already I have something of this behemoth of a model 100% finished. The Princept himself got the same treatment on his royal throne. His clothing matches the cold blue and warm browns of the cast metal on the Titan's body. You can always tell how important a character is in 40k by how bald they are. I glued down his majesty and you've heard of the Princess and the Frog. Well meet the Princept and his bros. To make the eyes glow I base coated them with white, then gave them a little object source lighting with my airbrush and then sprayed some neon green paint over top of that to tint it. Each lens got some green glazing on the bottom to create a shadow and a highlight of yellow on top to make them look bright and shiny. Just this head alone took a day and completely covered my palette in paint, but it was a good day. I am so glad I painted his little head first because number one, it's a nice palette cleanser after spending a few weeks not doing much painting because I've actually been building this thing. And it's a lovely little object to have to keep me company while I paint the other three square feet that make up this Titan. Step one, the base coating. Having painted the head, I took the colors and techniques and applied them to the body. I cheated a little, I sprayed the body sections gray, then sprayed black over top in a big wet coat, dabbing it off with a paper towel to get a super aggressive wash on the body. Now for the red and blue. Really this Titan is just a space marine, but a really big space marine, and it would look lame if all the metal parts were just gray. Adding in some texture with scratches and color will add a ton of visual interest to the things that aren't really meant to be interesting. I also love how 40k this thing is. His arms are really just brackets, but of course the Imperium had to add their brutalist artistic flair to it with some Aquilas. And why not add some verdigris here and there? One more little thing I can do to make him that much more exciting. Now that the regular paints are applied and I have some good highlights and shadows in the model, I can dry brush everything with some silver paint just for the glitter factor. This big brick of resin is super heavy and is about the size of my entire Space Marine collection if they were all mushed up into a Titan shaped lump. This body section is about three pounds. It's really hard to paint, but I have been trying really hard to add a lot of color and a lot of interest into this kind of rather unimpressive brick that makes up his body. I could have just gotten a can of Games Workshop Lead Belcher, hosed the model down and done some washes, and that would have looked pretty good. But I don't just want pretty good. I want perfection. This is a once in a lifetime miniature and I want it perfect. 
This model is gonna sit on my desk forever. I'm gonna be an old man on the porch and this model is going to be sitting next to me, keeping me company. So I want it absolutely incredible, but I am getting really tired of holding this thing up. So I think I'm gonna switch to the chicken legs. Maybe I'm just hungry, but don't these look just like drumsticks? He's got a pair of Kentucky Fried Titan legs. His juicy thighs are humongous hydraulic pistons and I wanna make them look real. I base coated them in silver and took some painter's tape to make rings around these tubes and airbrushed on some burnt umber inks. These rings of grime are representing the lubricant and grease that is pushed up as the pistons condense and extend. For the body sections, I've been using gray with blues and reds, but I want to introduce a new color, bronze. I don't know why, but I always think round stuff should be cast bronze. And it'll let me get one more color onto his body. I painted in my colors using tans and browns, and once I was happy with the color values, I dry brushed gold over top to bring it all together. Now that I have the brass and pistons done, I knocked out the rest of the parts with my blue and red steel mix, adding in scratches and weathering, and oh, so much glazing. I am pretty happy with these little chicken drumsticks. I have been working on these legs for about a day. <laughs> that sounds so ridiculous to say, but so much painting has gone into these legs to try to make each little element look like a different piece of metal that has been worked into one mega structure. I have been scratching and wet blending for like, 40 or 50 hours now, and I like to think that that practice has built to something. So I have got these feet right here, and I wanna see if I can get these done in an actually reasonable amount of time. On his feet seas, I decided his whole ankle will be brass, and because it's all one color, I can base coat with the airbrush. I am starting to really feel just how long it is going to take if I barely use the airbrush for this project. I sprayed it all a dark tan and got to glazing, darkening it all up with layers and layers of paint and then dry brushing a gold and then adding a little pop with some bright blue verdigris. I don't know exactly how much of these legs are going to be exposed, so I just have to go ahead and paint all of it. I made the pistons and toesy woesies look like steel. This will set them apart from the iron and give the Titan a little more realism, having each component made out of the best material for that purpose. This guy is the equivalent of painting a 2000 point army and unlike painting an army, I don't get those little moments of, ooh, I finished the heads, ooh, I finished the swords. Instead, I'm getting into situations of, I finished the toe. That took a long time. I've got seven more to do. Ah, oh, so much painting. But now his under armor is all complete. And I could stare at this thing for hours. But now it is time for the actually important stuff, the over armor, sometimes called armor. Most of these parts are separate, but on the legs and body, I need to do a little masking to protect my precious, precious paint. Tin foil works really well for big stuff like this. I'm gonna put some paper towels over the finished pieces to keep them safe. I can't let anything happen to my baby. I didn't really do any planning, so now I have to prime over the gray primer with black primer. Then I sprayed white in the center of each panel and sponged on some purple and white to add some texture. This isn't paint chips, but small imperfections in the metal. Then I sprayed everything blue with a transparent ink to show off everything underneath. And now for some dark, dark navy, spraying around the edges and darkening everything to my desired imperial navy. All of the armor panels are now dark blue and it feels so good. There is now finally more paint on the sucker than primer. It's time for the Suture Vora Hot Rod Flames and on the Night Lancer, it took me about five hours to freehand all of the flames. And that Night Lancer is like the size of this guy's foot. So I have a secret weapon to help me through the Hot Rod Flames on this guy and it is from today's sponsor. Beforehand, I used some tape and a Sharpie to make my flame designs that perfectly fit onto the pieces. Then Nick took those drawings and turned them into vector files that are digitally perfect. And Home Hobby and Hyperspace turned those into sticky backed stencils. I have been using stencils from Home Hobby and Hyperspace for years now to add intricate decorations to my models and they work like a charm. These are fast to use and give me much crisper results than when I try to freehand. These stencils have an adhesive back so they stick and hold to your models, giving you a good seal so paint doesn't leak underneath, and leaving your hands free to apply paint with an airbrush or sponging, giving you more control over the color and texture than water slide decals. And they are not one time use. When you're done, you can stick the stencil right back to the sticky paper to reuse them. I have all my original stencils, which are still going strong today. They have many different themes and designs on offer, including grim dark, celestial conflicts, superheroes, graffiti, and much, much more. Home Hobby and Hyperspace is having a sale on their stencils. Shop the code EOB10 to get 10% off store-wide until December 22nd. And check out the description to get early access to some Black Friday deals. 
One thing I've been wanting to do ever since I started building this Titan was give him an absurd number of kill tallies in the form of skulls. I went through every decal sheet I own and found all the skulls and one by one I applied them all. I used some transparent inks over top to blend them in and some sponging of dark blue to make them look more realistic. I applied my stencils and began airbrushing orange right over the armor. It's kind of weird using a stencil because I don't really know what the end result will look like. I have to just try my best to make interesting flames layering on more colors and textures with airbrushing and sponging. A little contrast paint yellow and red gave the flames an incredibly vibrant appearance, and now it's time for the best thing in the whole world, demasking. Ever so carefully, I peeled off the stencils and it left behind the crispiest flames this side of the Mississippi. The fire is looking hot, but it's a little clip -arty. It's very easy to see the edge of the decal, so I wanna find some things I can do to kinda smooth it over and feel a little more realistic. I sprayed some red ink right over the flames and navy armor to blend them together and make the flames look like they're glowing. Then I picked out all of the trim with a gray. All the fancy trim was throwing me off a little bit. I have my Titan iron and brass recipes on lock, but nothing figured out for the decorative trim. At first I tried to do it all with metallics, but the contrast wasn't really doing it for me, so I went over these areas with black and white paint to make them look really reflective, and I glazed some blues and reds onto them to add some color. Then I edge highlighted everything. It's not super realistic, but it is super interesting looking to me, and this is my Titan. His little head's done! Oh, he's such a cutie! And this project is finally dawning on me how incredibly large it is. I've just passed the 100 hours of painting mark. And um, I might be able to finish this, but I think I need a pick me up. I've been using these fun dog fact cards for masking. So let's just have a little fun. Fun dog fact. Did you know Dalmatian puppies are born completely white and they develop their spots as they get older? Well, not according to 101 Dalmatians. I wonder if that's true. Titans have this weird thing where their decorations are all carved stone. I guess they're carefully carved out of marble and then glued on top of the steel. It's very strange, but it does look neat, and that's the real reason. I base coated them in a green gray and layered up to white paint, accentuating all the cracks. Then I dry brushed the symbol with white paint and I washed it all with a dark brown oil paint. The details are really crisp, so oil paint will be the perfect wash. Every single part of the Reaver Titan's body is painted, I think, and I can finally start to see the light at the end of the Reaver Tunnel. I just want to see him stand again, that's all I want. And to get him closer, it is time for all these guns. The body and armor are all dark blue, so for the guns, some nice warm brass will stand out and make them look striking. I painted these up with the airbrush and I discovered a really funny noise the Reaver Laser Blaster makes when the air hits it at just the right angle. After laying down a base coat, I did about 10 layers of washing and glazing to darken the colors until the guns were looking ancient and dangerous. Then a dry brushing of gold and silver for the shine. On the missile launchers, for some reason, each microscopic missile is separate. It'll make painting a little bit easier, I guess, but gluing them on a challenge. I know of no better color for big cartoon missiles than red with a little white tip. And you know what else has a little white tip? That's right, our Patreon. We have monthly terrain packs. This month, it's the Shipping Hub, a huge selection of huge models, the Titan-sized crane, working containers, elevators, and stairs. And if you always want to be up to date on the goings on at Eon's Battle and be entered into our monthly giveaways, this month is the Space Marine Spearhead Force. Follow the link in the description to sign up to our newsletter. Ah, oh, the last step in this absolute journey of a project, the base. And luckily, it's nice and small. Shouldn't take too long. The base is nice and simple. The Reaver is the real draw. The base is just there so he doesn't fall over. If the Reaver is posed like he is in the Games Workshop web store, he can actually stand all by himself. But for my action pose, he needed a base. I airbrushed some browns over the base, getting a nice earthy battlefield, and then picked out all my little fellows with some paint. These downed guardsmen were just unlucky that they showed up to the battlefield before the Titan showed up. All the guard that were behind him are probably nice and safe. A little streaking grime for washing, and then it was time to paint the biggest base room of all time, black. <sighs> it's done. It's all done. I've been dreaming of this moment for the last two weeks. Ah, <sighs> it's time for some glue. I loaded the sucker up with tons of super glue and epoxy, putting them together one last time. It's really not a miniature. It's barely a usable model. It weighs seven pounds and its rules are hilariously inefficient. These Titans are great for the same reason 40K is great. It's just dumb fun. 
a mashup of mecha anime and medieval churches with a little World War II and Dune mixed in for good measure. These things shouldn't exist, but they do. And is there a good reason? Nope. The only excuse for their existence is because it's cool. This Titan has been about a month of effort, and really way more than that, from designing stencils to figuring out the engineering just to make him stand. It has been an absolute blast, and speaking of blast, I can't wait to use his Reaver Laser Blaster on Sean's Imperial Guard and Nick's Blue Orcs. He stands! My beautiful baby boy! He's all done! After a hundred and who knows how many hours. I painted a Warhound Titan, I traded that Warhound Titan, I got this guy all built, washed, primed, painted, and now I am the proud owner of a Reaver Titan, my favorite of the Titans. Oh, it's been such a long process, but here he stands. Big thanks to Home Hobby and Hyperspace for helping out with the stencils and sponsoring this video. I am going to go to bed.